This module is all about finding files. It works like this. You specify a criteria, a set of criteria that the files that you're looking for should match, such as their name. Maybe you want to find all files that end in .txt, for example. Another criteria, you could be looking for all files greater than a certain size, or older than a certain date. Or maybe you're looking for just directories, that sort of thing. Once you've found the files, you then want to perform some action on them. Perhaps you're only interested in knowing the names of such files. Or perhaps you want to perform some operation on each file that you find. This is the chapter in which we learn how to do that. We use a program called Find to do that. Find is a very powerful program. It's much more powerful than it looks. It's got a very, very long manual page entry. Anyway, its usage is, in general, you type in find, then you specify the name of the directory in which you want to search for the files. Now what will happen is find will look in that directory and then it will look in all subdirectories and then it will look in all subdirectories of those directories and so on and so on and so on. It will look down the entire subtree, down the entire branch. And then in brackets you specify, sorry, you don't specify them in brackets, but I've written them in brackets because they are optional. You can specify, if you want to, the criteria that you wish to use to search for the files. If you don't specify any criteria, you will have all files listed and all directories. In other words, it will list absolutely everything that it finds in that directory and all subdirectories. And you can also specify some action that you wish to perform on each of those files or directories. And if you don't specify an action, the default action is that it will just simply list them on the screen for you. For example, I might want to find in the top level directory slash user slash tom. So I start in slash user slash tom and look at all look in that directory and in all subdirectories files that are named report.txt. So we'll only find files that are named report.txt and nothing else. And what do I want to do with those files? Well, I want to print them. Well, th it, that is the word print there, but the print option does not actually print the files. At least it doesn't print them to a printer. It writes their names onto the screen. Let's, uh, let's have a look at some more detail about that so you have a better understanding of what we're talking about. The print option that I just mentioned is the default action in some implementations of Find, not all. What that means is in some versions of Find, in, on some Unixes, you'll, when you're using the Find program, if you want the find program to actually print the names of the files that it finds on the screen, then you'll actually have to type in the minus print option. In other words, you can type in find slash user slash tom minus name report.txt and there could be several report.txts inside the slash user slash tom branch, but they won't appear on the screen because you neglected to put in the minus print option. It's uh, very annoying and people sometimes forget to do that and they wonder why they don't get any results. But on uh, other implementations of, of find, it is the default action. You don't need to put it in at all. Now, this is a very, very important option. When you're using wildcards to specify the name of the file that you're looking for, you must, absolutely must, enclose that argument in single quotes as follows. Let's say we're finding in the current directory and all subdirectories files that are named star.txt. That bit, the star.txt, must be enclosed in single quotes. If you do not enclose it in single quotes, you will get very, very un unpredictable and bizarre behaviour. Well, it's not entirely unpredictable. I know what would happen, because I've spent a bit of time uh, studying this sort of thing, but it would take me quite a long time to explain it to you. So for now, just memorise the fact that if you want to use wildcards, then put the argument inside single quotes. In fact, it doesn't hurt to put single quotes around the file name argument at any stage. It certainly won't make any difference in a, in a negative sense. So you might just want to make a rule for yourself that you always put single quotes around the file name when using find. Let's have a look at an example of that. OK, here I am in the course folder again. If I just simply type in find dot that's probably the simplest find command you can ever do, and that is simply find me the names of every thing, every entity, 
that is in this current folder, current directory and all subdirectories and it will print them on the screen because that is the default action in this particular implementation of find. So let's try that. And there they all are. And you can see here with subdir, there's the name of the actual directory and then there's the names of all the things in that particular directory. And then it moves on to the next files in the current directory. So they'll be scattered around in there this one here, subdir1, that is a actual directory name and so is dot, that's a directory name as well. But everything else in there is actually a file name. We'll now examine finding files based on their name. You may recall there were a couple of files called hello or variants on hello in the subdir1 subdirectory. Let's see if we can't use find to locate them. So we type in find dot and then minus name. Now most people forget to put the minus name in. They just say they want to look for files called hello or hellstar or whatever you want to call it like that. They forget that they actually need the minus name there to say that the thing we're actually looking for is the name of the file, not say the owner of the file or the group of the file or something else. Now at this point, I'm going to adhere to my own little rule of putting everything inside single quotes, especially if I'm using wildcards, so it would look like that. Let's run that. And of course there are two files, hello and hello.c in subdo1. Now in this particular example, it would have worked perfectly fine if I didn't put the uh, single quotes around it, as you can see but that is just in this particular occasion. Probably two or three times out of ten when you do that without single quotes you're going to get an incorrect set of responses. So unless you completely understand what the single quotes are for just put them in all the time as a sort of a guideline. Let's look at some of the more advanced uses for find. The find program can also be used to find files based on other criteria that you specify, such as the file's owner, the file permissions, the file type, the file date, the file size, even uh, technical things like the inode number, which you'll learn about later on. And once you've found the files, you can do other things other than just print their names on the screen. You can perform actions on them. Let's look at an example of that. You could say, find in the current directory files that are of type F and files that are of type F mean regular files and when I say regular files I mean files that are not directories so files that are directories will be excluded from this list of files that get found here and all those files that we find we could do the following we could exec or execute a particular command we could use the rm-i command to interactively remove the files that we find. The open and close curly brackets and the backslash semicolon there are required at the end, well the backslash semicolon is required to be put after each command that you use with minus exec and the open and close curly bracket symbols are used to denote the files that actually get found substituted into the rm-i command line. That probably doesn't make any sense at all. But what it means is, if you found three files, for example, file A, file B and file C, then you would execute the following lines, rm-iA, rm-iB and rm-iC in sequence. So the open and close curly brackets would get substituted in turn for A, B and C. Now that sort of advanced manipulation of files is, well it's exactly that, it's advanced and for that reason I don't really want to go into it at this beginning level of the course.